Next speaker will be uh, Mariana Arcuri from UNESP Brazil. And Mariana, welcome. If you can put your presentation on. Okay. Um. I'm also asking you to activate your, oh, okay, we can see you. Can you hear me as well? Yes, we can hear you well. We cannot see your presentation. I, I don't think, I'm not Just sure you- one minute. Yes, now it's and fine. is on presentation on, mode? No, not yet. Now it is. Yep. Okay, so take your time. Thank you. So my name is Mariana. I'm glad to be with you today sharing my results about this project, which is entitled the Rhabdopsis Taliana Dicarboxylate Carriers Molecular and Functional Analysis. All the eukaryotic cells contain a double membrane organelle most commonly new like the powerhouse of the cell machinery, the mitochondria. Actually, all of the energy produced by them comes from oxidative reactions that take place at the inner mitochondrial membrane, whose its permeability is due to the presence of some mitochondrial proteins, members of the mitochondrial carrier family, <clears throat> which maintain, um, which acts like a selective barrier and allow to the mitochondria to, to be a compartment with a close relation between cytosol and also nucleus. The decarboxylate carriers are proteins belonging to the MCF, the mitochondrial carrier family, which its activity is to promote the influx of the decarboxylate into matrix. The number and substrate specificity of the ICs, the decarboxylate carriers, varies according to the organism in, and in the model plant, Arabidopsis taliana genome, three genes encoding DICs were identified. Initially, the DICs were associated with another MCF, the uncoupling proteins, but on 2008, Palmieri and co-workers proposed a recategorization of these genes as DICs um, after performing uh, extensive phylogenetic and biochemical analysis. The decarboxylate are um, essential substrates and intermediates during the, cell resp the cellular respiration, and especially on the tricarboxylic acid cycle. The DICs may also be associated with other metabolic pathways. Um, being able to transport uh, reduced molecules derived from glycolysis uh, through the malate aspartate shuttle and thus participating in another pathways, like for example, the amino acids, nucleotides, synthesis and gluconeogenesis. The DIC's isoforms shares some similarity and the DIC2 is the most related between the three isoforms identified in Arabidopsis taliana genome. Um, according to transcriptomic key available data, data available, uh, the two of them, the JC1 and 2, have a widespread expression, as we can see in, on this heat map. While the third one is more restricted to flower and silica buds, and its expression is, hard, is difficult to be detected. And the JC1 and 2 are also reported to be responsive to total mechanical and biotic stress, uh, thus suggesting it's a potential involvement of these genes in plant response to biotic and also abiotic stresses. So to, 
to highlight about to ha highlight about their function in vivo because we need to assume that there is a lack about molecular and functional uh, data about these genes in plants. And this is the main end of this project to, to establish possible uh, functions for this gene in vivo, do its relevance on, uh, on a physiological level. And for this, we employed two approaches. One of them is using knockout lines, um, uh, tDNA insertion mutant lines previously obtained. And the other one is using overexpression lines. <clears throat> As I, I present before, the GIC2 is the most re phylogenetically related isoform and also is reported as being the most responsive to a wide range of stresses. That's the reasons why we choose this special one isoform to overexpress on this study. So given the importance of the decarboxylates to the mitochondrial and cellular metabolism, what kind of phenotype do I expect to see on a knockout mutant lines. I must confess that I, I really was expecting to see tiny plants or as I, I use it to say in Portuguese, mijadas, but that's not what we observe it. The tDNA insertion mutant lines revealed a high a drastic, drastic impact on, on DIC1 to 3 expression. And in the other hand, the overexpression lines is uh, different levels of relative expression of GIC2. The thermal call. <laughs> um, the knockout lines is uh, just one minute. The knockout lines show it a decrease on germination. But how, however, the leaf area and above ground biomass show it a significant increase in, in their leaf area and the above ground biomass accumulation. In spite of no, root, no alterations were uh, detected on root length and early flowering time and an increase in the silic length was observed, suggesting its impact on the reproductive development. The, over, uh, the overexpression lines were employed to, to evaluate the opposite situation. And the opposite is also true. Um, no changes were verif verified on the germination rate, but on the leaf area and the biomass accumulation, we can see the opposite what happened to the knockout lines was observed. So we can see that uh, that is a that that have a decrease in their leaf area and their biomass accumulation. Um, both phenotyping are in line. So at this point, the analysis will be turned be more focused on the tDNA insertion lines. To highlight this impact of this disturbance on the physiology uh, at a physiological level, gas exchanges measurements were performed. No alterations were detected on transpiration rate, stomatal contents, and uh, on the amount of carbon in the substomatal cavity, but on the assimilation rate uh, revealed high, highly increased when compared to white type. When we look for the respiration rate and we, we don't see any difference, between the mutant lines compared to a type, it suggests that the mutant lines is inhibiting um, 
photosynthesis, uh, enhancing their photosynthetic efficiency. And this hypothesis is confirmed when we see that the cap uh, oxidation capacity of chlorophyll is increased in the mutant lines. And after this uh, physiological analysis, we performed some molecular analysis to, to understand what is happening and if it, the phenotype and the effects that we saw was due the, the knockout effect of the tDNA insertion of there is something happened that we are not checking. So the first step was to verify if the, there is some compensatory effects. In, so the relative expression of DACs one to three was measured and also other MCFs were evaluated because there are some MCFs that exhibit a potential specificity for decarboxylate transports so do this reason they were included in the, in the analysis. This analysis revealed a special role of DIC2 to buffer the absence of other genes and no alterations were identified in DICs, isoforms or the MCFs evaluated on this analysis. <clears throat> To investigate the mitochondrial homeostasis, the relative exp expression of alternative, alternative oxidase, who, who's it's an enzyme that plays a key role on energy dissipating system, and the members of the electron transport chain were evaluated. And this analysis revealed a drastic key and down regulation of alternative oxidase. And in the other hand, we can see that the members of ETC, the electron transport chain, are drastically uh, upregulated, uh, suggesting that there is, um, there is a high activity of electron transport chain, and there, that is uh, high levels of reactive oxygen species accumulated in mitochondria. So to, to comprove this hypothesis, we performed some staining analysis that can detect the presence of hydrogen peroxide. And as we can see on these photos, the mutant lines is even more reactive oxygen species accumulation. The next level to understanding what is happening with these plants was to perform some metabolic analysis. <clears throat> to elucidate it, we determined the metabolic profile <clears throat> for these mutant lines. This global analysis allowed us to identify a wide range of molecules, being more representative for carbohydrates, carbohydrates, amino acids, and lipids. And among the total uh, compounds identified in our metabolite profiling, the more, most representative are showed on this heat map, where the most, uh, most, most intense present, no, the most concentrates are represented in, in red, while the less uh, concentrations are represented in blue boxes. Performance on in silico analysis on this metabolic data generated, we observed a drastic and clear alterations in phenylalanine biosynthesis and metabolism. And also on the ascorbate pathways in, a, in with a less statistical support, arginine, and proline metabolism. The phenylalanine, phenylalanine is an aromatic amino acid that is derived from shikimic acid cycle. Shikimic acid cycle is the mechanism in which plants 
this plate to drive the carbon produced in the photosynthesis to the synthesis of secondary compounds. And, and the stichemic acid is being, uh, is being referred as the convergence point between the primary, second, uh, primary metabolism, photosynthesis, and the secondary metabolism, the secondary compound synthesis. The secondary compounds, synth uh, the secondary compounds uh, derived from um, aromatic amino acids. And for example, phenolic compounds are highly implicated in plant response to biotic stress. For example, terpenos, isoprenoids, and others. Our metabolic analysis revealed that the mutant lines is a decrease in shikimic acid content and in concern, in its concern, an increase in phenylalanine is e and alcubin are equally ob observed. In line with the relation between the GICs and the plant response to biotic stresses. While the alter alterations in ascor ascorbate metabolism, which is implicated in plant response to oxidative stress, <clears throat> supports our previous data about the mitochondrial st status, reinforcing our hypothesis. So to summarize, finally, as a global view of those, this data, our results suggest that DICs impact the biomass, the biomass accumulation, do its effect on the, on the photosynthetic coefficients. In parallel, the DIC2 reveals a special role in compensatory effects of the absence of the other isoforms. And disturbance on mitochondrial homeostasis were, uh, are direct, directly affected by DICs. The disruption of DIC's expression induces clear alterations on their metabolic con contents and plants response to biotic and abiotic stresses. I'm grateful to you all for your attention to SBBQ and SBBF for the opportunity for my supervisor. I'm grateful for your guidance. And I like to thank my parents and my kids as I, I use it to call my students at the middle school. Thank you all. Thank you, Mariana, for a nice presentation. Uh, are there questions from the audience? We are arriving at the, our time limit here. Um, I, have, I have a question, but I cannot use the question and answer. Okay, can you you can you can make a question orally? No problem. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot to all of you. So very nice talk. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask you if you have a relationship between these uh, carriers that you are studying and the mitochondrial membrane potential, as uh, there is a strong relationship between the uh, electrode transport chain and the membrane electric potential. So you have many uh, reporters, mito trackers, and everything, uh, things like that. Uh, have you ever done those studies? It was a very nice talk. Thank you. Thank you for encouraging me and for your question. Um, I don't have uh, directed features about this. I have some patterns of relative expression of UCPs, for example, because the other part of my project is talk about UCPs. So I have indirect results about this, but we, we are um, starting to, to identify alterations on homeostasis, mitochondrial homeostasis using uh, some probes. So that will be the next step to, to, our, to our work. Mm -hmm. Thank you, all right. Um, I think there are no more questions. So 
with that, I'd like to uh, thank for all the, the speakers that uh, joined us today. I'd like you to, to open your camera so that we can make a round of applause for you all. And um, it was a really nice session. And uh, I thank you again for uh, taking your time for uh, joining us, especially Dr. Peruso. And uh, so with that, uh, uh, I just like to make a little advertise for the next, for the upcoming webinar we'll have in two weeks uh, related to uh, bioenergy and uh, metabolism. So we invite you all to join us again. And uh, thank you again for participating and take care and look forward to see you again.